Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer.com. Today on our 2018 Jeep Cherokee, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Curt 4-Pole Vehicle Trailer Wiring. Many of our Jeep customers use their vehicles to do a little bit of everything. But what our wiring is going to do is allow you to hook up to a trailer and it's going to sync our vehicle's lights to the trailer, keeping you safe and legal. Now one thing I really like about this wiring is the fact that it uses a module box. Now what that module box is going to do, that's going to protect your vehicle's factory wiring if any shorts or anything like that were to occur on the trailer side. What I really like too is that this kit is going to come with everything you need to get it completely installed. And you can either choose to mount your wiring outside or inside of the vehicle. And if you did choose to leave your wiring inside, what you typically do is keep it stored underneath your compartment here. Then whenever you're ready to use it, you take it out and drape it across your threshold and close your hatch on it. Now the hatch isn't going to hurt or damage your wiring at all. It's just very important to make sure that you stay away from the actual latch. And if you do choose to mount it outside, there are a number of different brackets available that'll work with what type of hitch you have here at eTrailer.com. Obviously, if you have your trailer wiring, you're gonna plan on doing some towing. And if you're looking for a good hitch that's up to that task, I'd recommend this Kurt like we have here today. Now, when it comes to the installation, many of our customers said that this process took them a little bit longer than they expected. And it's really not that difficult, it is just a little time consuming. But let's go ahead and wire it up together now. To begin our installation, we're going to be working here in the back of the vehicle, so we'll go ahead and open up our hatch. Now on each side of our panel here at the back, we're gonna have some cargo hooks that we need to take off. So you'll just take them and spin them a quarter turn by hand. You can just pull them off and set them to the side. Over here on the driver's side, we're going to take out this little cargo compartment. You can just lift underneath it, pull it out, set it off to the side. Once that's out of the way, we can remove our floor cover. We'll lift up, kind of pull it towards us, and set it to the side. Now with the floor cover out of the way, we're going to remove our spare tire and all the stuff underneath it and set it out of the car. Now we'll come here to our threshold and remove our hooks. To do that, I'll get a flathead screwdriver and a pry underneath that cover. And underneath we'll have a T15 Torx bit screw. So I'll go ahead and pull that out. Now once I have this out, on the other side of the threshold will be the exact same setup, so you'll just repeat that process. With both of our hooks removed, we can now grab the threshold, kind of pull it upwards. That'll release the clips on the underside. On each side of our spare tire shroud, we're going to remove one Phillips head screw. we can remove our spare tire shroud here at the back. We need to pull up to release our tabs just like we did on the threshold. And we can just take the whole thing, pull it out, and set it to the side. Now we'll come to our tail lights and remove them. So we'll take out two T30 Torx bit screws. With our screws out, we can then kind of work that tail light out and come to the back side of it and disconnect it. So this plug here, there will be a button in the center. And push that down. To separate our light from the wiring. We're gonna set this to the side and use that same process to remove our tail light on the passenger side. Now what we can do is remove this, we'll pull the lever, just set it off to the side. Then we can grab our side panel, 
kind of pull it away from the body of the vehicle. And we just need to separate it a couple of inches, just enough to kind of see back there and maybe get our hand back through there. On the driver's side taillight pocket here, we're going to have a rubber grommet. We need to just grab it and pull it out. That'll expose the hole behind there. That'll give us enough room to run our new wiring through here. So now we'll take our new wiring with our yellow and brown wires and we're going to take these connectors, reach back through our side panel and work them through that hole in our tail light pocket. They're not too far back so you don't have to reach very far back so it is relatively easy to get to. It's just not super easy to see so you kind of have to do this by feel. Now what we're going to do is take a utility knife and put a slit in this grommet. That way our wires can kind of sit down in there and be protected. Kind of move the wires out of the way. Cut that opening and kind of drop our wires down through there and then replace our grommet. Now we can take some of the included black silicone and just seal up that grommet where we made that slice in it. So now we can plug everything back in. We'll take our factory wiring and plug it into the new wiring here. Just push them all the way together and pull them back a little bit if you want to make sure that they're completely seated. Now our tail light will actually plug into that last connector. With everything plugged in, we can now re-secure our tail light. Now we're going to take our green wire with the ends and run this over to the passenger side tail light pocket. And we're gonna get those ends into that tail light pocket the same way that we did on the driver's side. Same thing with our panel too. To get this peeled back, we'll just grab it and just work it away from the body of the vehicle. I went ahead and ran our wires up into that pocket through the grommet and sealed it up, same way I did the other side. So now what we can do is plug everything in together. Your factory wiring, plug it into our new harness. We'll take the other end and plug that into our tail light. Once everything's plugged in, go ahead and re-secure your tail light. Now we can take our white wire with the pre-attached ring terminal and ground that out. Now you want to make sure you're grounding it to a clean, solid piece of metal. And so I'm going to choose right here. Now to secure it, I'm going to use the included self-tapping screw. So now we can take the black wire coming from our box and connect it to the bundle of black power wire that came with our kit. So to do this, we'll take an end of our wire and strip it back. What we're gonna do is take one of the included buck connectors, slide that over, and crimp it down. Now we can connect the other end of our buck connector to our black power wire. I went ahead and wrapped up our buck connector here with some electrical tape just for a little extra protection. To be able to drop our power wire down to the outside of the vehicle, that way we can run it up front, we're going to go through this grommet. So what we're going to do is just drill a small hole in it, that way we can drop our wire through. Now we can take the other end of our power wire and put it into the hole in the grommet and run 
all of that wire down to the bottom side. Now to make it a little easier to run through, I did just spray our grommet with a little soapy water. Now just something I want to mention, normally with your four pole wiring, you would typically leave it inside of the vehicle stored. That way when you're not using it, it'll help keep it out of the elements and stay in better shape. However, our customer is wanting to permanently mount this outside on the hitch. So what I'm actually going to do is use that same grommet that we ran our power wire through. Just put a slit in it and drop our four pole down through there. And that's how I'll get our connector over to our hitch. This is what our wires look like now that we ran them through our grommet. And I went ahead and used some of that black silicone to seal everything up. Now we can go ahead and mount our module box. And to secure it, we're gonna use the included two-sided tape. So it's a good idea to clean off the surface of the box with some rubbing alcohol, which I've done. Peel that paper off. Stick it to the back of the box. Peel the other side off. Then we can stick it to the body of the vehicle. Now I'm gonna choose a spot down here. So I'll go ahead and stick it to it and I'll show you where I did it. I chose this spot down here. That way it's out of the way. But we had some good flat metal to stick it to. So I went ahead and ran our power wire up to the front of the car. And here's where it came out of that grommet. And I just ran it up along through here and up and over our subframe. Just wanna make sure to avoid any hot or moving parts. And I secured it using some zip ties along the way. We dropped it down behind this piece of plastic underneath our fuel tank. Then I went ahead and removed a few 10 millimeter screws. That way I could kind of peel this handle down. Just ran our wire along these factory lines. Now to get our wire up into the engine compartment, what I've done is I popped the hood and I actually just took a piece of tubing and dropped it down from the engine compartment to the underside of the car. That way I can just tape our wire to it, go up to the engine compartment and pull our wire up. So now underneath the engine compartment, we'll go ahead and grab our pull wire and feed the rest of our power wire into the compartment. And I'll go ahead and secure it. That way we can attach it to our battery. So I went ahead and secured our wiring to keep it tight and into the engine compartment. Now we can start to run this over to the positive terminal on our battery. So I kind of got around the fuse box. Gets a little slack to work with. Now we don't have to cut it to exact length because we will have to add on a fuse block. So I'll trim it about right here. Then we can strip the insulation back and prepare everything to get completely connected. So now we can take our fuse holder and make sure the fuse is not in it, which it is not here, and we connect it to our power wire. Well, to do that, I'm gonna use a heat shrink plug connector. That'll just offer a little extra protection since it will be under the hood. However, the one that comes included will work just fine. We'll crimp that down on one end. Connect the other end to our black power wire. And then on the other end of our fuse holder, we're going to put on the included ring terminal. So I went ahead and used a heat gun to shrink our heat shrink here to get it sealed up nice and tight. Now what we can do is connect our ring terminal to our positive battery terminal. I'm gonna take a 10 millimeter and remove that nut there. And go ahead and put a ring terminal over. And then run the nut back down. Now once that is connected, what we can do is take the included fuse, pop that in the holder, and close up the dust cap. 
So I went ahead and used some zip ties to secure everything up and make it look nice. Now with everything connected, and before we put our trunk area back together, it's a good idea to test it and make sure it's working properly. So I got a tester plugged in. However, you could use your trailer if you don't have a tester. Now we can run through our signals. So we'll use our left turn, our right turn, our brakes, and our running lights. Now that we verified everything's working properly, what you can do is clean up your wiring back here and put everything back together in the opposite order that we removed it. And lastly, I used a no drill bracket and ran my four pole wiring over to our hitch. You're going to want to make sure to secure it properly and keep it as far away from any heat from our muffler as possible. And that'll finish up our look and installation of the Kurt four pole trailer wiring on our 2018 Jeep Cherokee.